Welcome back. We're still here with Bosin and we're talking a closer moments now on why the FX is still not readily available even with the launch of the FMDQ iPhone. Bosin. Yes, I, I think the, the in, in the morning yesterday, around this time yesterday, quite a lot of, of things were going front and back on social media. Some banks say, look, you've got to come and pay about 340 or some number of little figures being bandied because people want to, to understand, uh, people want to get in, in on the game. Again, mm -hmm. we, uh, Nigerians need to understand that as I said, yesterday, the banks themselves were just getting in on the game in the new business, as it were. So they need to understand that even the banks themselves were just getting in. No one was sure where things were starting from or where you, you're going. It's, so at that point in time, everybody were kept at the door, as it, as it were. Just hold on a, a second. Uh, things will come in, but hold on. We need to f hear from the central bank first what was going to And I think as the rates were coming in, as news were filtering into the central bank, and hearing what the customers were saying, what the banks were saying, look, this is what my customers were, the customers were asking for, those want to do retail, those want to do wholesale and whatever, big boys, $5,000, we want to do a million dollars and above. The central bank decided to weigh in very quickly and did the special uh, uh, intervention that was done at the sale, set a little bit of, look at the rates that the banks were submitting and said, look, I'm going to do it at this particular price. That has set the tone, therefore, for the market to take off. Again, I'll go back a little bit to uh, the stock market, which is a number of people seem to have be too understood. In the days, if you bring in a big volume to the market in, in, in those days, and coming in, coming in that just got listed, uh, in those days, what you do is that you do some allotment first. You do those allotments based on uh, demand the brokerage firms bringing out whatever that sets the tone as it were for the rest of the retail of 5,000 units 1,000 units 20 units 85 units 100 units to kick off so the central bank set the tone by providing clarity by providing confidence and say look we have a way to go so central bank said look yeah officially we're doing 199 okay look I'm going to do this special seller 280 I flagged off this marathon oh. right I'm joining everybody but I'm joining in good faith at 280. Therefore, let us, and you see that from that 280, the market didn't really go wacky as it were. Okay, so you didn't see 500, you didn't see 700, you didn't see 1,000. What you saw was between 280 and 288, 285, as deals were done. And it finally settled at 281, which is just about 150 cobble or 180 cobble to the rate at which the central bank did the official auction. That tells you that the market has priced that in and has set a bit of uh, a benchmark for where transactions will continue from today. And that was what I saw. Right now, the market is getting ready and let's see how it goes all over again. let's see how it goes and of course i'll be talking to wally in just a bit so we get oh, his okay. thoughts on where cool. the market is but bosin thank mm -hmm. you so much for that's coming good. in thank so you. just stick around let's listen to wally together <laughs> wally a good morning to you wally olusi is the is an investment analyst with afri invest he's joining me now as we talk more about uh, this fmdq interbank forex trading and impact on the economy and as well as the market so good morning to you wally morning Harry. Thank you so much for joining the conversation. So, looking at the way the market started out yesterday, that's the Forex market, what do you think, how much of an impact uh, do you think this will have on the market? Because already we saw the equities market finishing in negative territory. We also saw the same happening in the fixed income, fixed income segment of the market. Well, um, thank you for having me, Harris. Um, yeah, just like you said, the market was down yesterday. And um, we think that has um, a little to do with uh, our market, the FMD, um, actually new interbank exchange rate market closed yesterday. We think that's badly due to, you know, profit taking. Market have rallied about 7.3%, you know, following the announcement by uh, Governor Gordon and FLA about the new, you know, um, FX rate regime that we have. So we think, broadly um, speaking, what happened yesterday was largely due to, you know, profit taking in the equities market. I mean, if you take the uh, number of stocks that you know, decline, they were largely the bear, market bear weather. So, but we think for the week, the net effect of what is happening in the overall economy might, of course, be expected to, to be made positive for the market. I mean, if you know uh, this continues, uh, we, we think domestic investors will eventually see coming to take some early bet positions ahead of you know foreign players that you know we are expected to also join. You know, in the market, immediately you see that this new FX regime, you know, works as you know as as, as fun. I mean, what happened yesterday was quite interesting. 
uh, seen out there, we were actually having a vote as to whether the market is closed above or below um, to, uh, 300 naira to the dollar. But it was really interesting yesterday to see that the market actually closed somewhat around our forecast rate for for the you know naira based on our report that we released. We got our first reaction to the FX you know uh, uh, policy that was published that was announced last week. So I mean we think. This is positive for the market. With the CBN claim of the defense of demand, we think things are going to be more stable going forward. We do not think investors have any reason to you know, want to stay scary. Once the system stabilizes, corporate earnings will come in. If the numbers are good and investors can easily you know, analyze performance for key pickers in the market, and they think it's you know, looking up for, the, you know, for most of the sectors, we think they will keep buying and, you know, Overall, uh, the market will be positive. Uh, earlier in January, if you look at uh, what the equities market will do for the year, we painted about three scenarios. And for us, we think uh, all the three scenarios for, uh, for the market to prove positive have been met. And then the budget is being implemented. The peg on FX have been adjusted beyond our expectation. And subsidy has been removed. So we think there's no reason for the market not to close you know, positive for the year. So we think. Everything is looking good. If the uh, policy and if the reform in the system continue as current is, we think um, you know the market should you know, be good for it by yeah. What about for those um, you know, those items that still can't come to the to the market to to the interbank foreign exchange market who still have to source uh, from autonomous uh, from the parallel market in this case? How do you think this will also affect those who are under that particular category? Well, I think for us, that the 41 items that are yet to be included in the you know, list of items that are you know, eligible for you know, FX transactions in the interbank market remain a concern for us. I mean, if you see through the intention of the you know, CDN, what they really want is a single market for FX. But with the insistence that 41 items will remain inadmissible into this new interbank market, what you are, you know, effectively saying is that you want the parallel market to continue to thrive because you are not banning those items. You are saying they can't access FX at the, you know, official market or what's called the interbank market now, meaning that the parallel market continues to thrive. What we think uh, the policymakers should do is for the monetary policy to hand off, you know, uh, this trade policy and allow, you know, the Minister of Trade to, you know, impose proper trade policies on this, you know, item. If we want to ban these items, let's ban them. If we want to ask tariff or look for ways to, you know, reduce their importation in, into the country, maybe that's what we should do. But by, you know, asking, you know, importance of this product not to ask, access FX in the new interbank market is tantamount to, you know, asking the parallel market to continue to pressure parallel market and the, you know, amount of and closure that we, that we anticipated with, between the interbank market and the foreign market, you know, that, you know, uh, as much if those 41 items, you know, they have to go and access their um, effects from, from the parallel market. So that's really a concern for us. We think with the system, you know, working, we think the CBN might reconsider and, you know, do something about this. Wiley, thank you so much for joining me on the program, of course, uh, sharing, giving us your perspectives as well. Thank you for having me, Harry. Good morning. Walio Lucy is an investment analyst with Afri Invest there, giving us uh, his thoughts as well uh, with regards to uh, this uh, FMDQ interbank forex trading, which actually started yesterday, the impact on the, some parts of the economy and the markets as well. But that's it on today's edition of the program. Many thanks for spending time with us. I'm Harriet Agmini. Have a profitable day.